In this part of lecture 11, what we want to develop is additional graphs, pressure composition graphs, in which we plot not only the total pressure as a function of mole fraction in the liquid, but also total pressure as a function of mole fraction in the vapor. These are examples of pressure composition phase diagrams, and what we want is or what we're going to get is a bubble point line and a dew point line and a tie line. Those are the three things that we want to develop in this part of the lecture. So we had in the previous part of the lecture, we had a graph like this. We had the total pressure as a function of mole fraction. We we'll use that symbol X as the mole fraction of a component one in the liquid phase. And just to refresh our memory, what the system is here is like this. Here you have a liquid here. Here you have a vapor up here. You have two components here. You have two components there. There's a dynamic equilibrium between the two. If you change the mole fraction of component one here, you change the amount of one up here, and that will change the total pressure. And Root's Law says that for an ideal solution, the total pressure is a linear function of the mole fraction in the liquid phase. So this would be total pressure for our Root's Law. Now what we want to do is to have the same kind of pressure temperature, or sorry, pressure composition phase diagram where you have total pressure, but now instead of a plot of total pressure versus mole fraction in the liquid phase, what we want is a plot of total pressure versus mole fraction in the vapor phase. And we'll use the symbol Y to denote vapor phase. Just to remember, it's a two component system, two components, one and two. So that means that we can easily translate this from a mole fraction of one to a mole fraction of two by saying one minus, because a mole fraction, one minus mole fraction of one is a mole fraction of two. Well, so how do we want to get there? How do we how how can we express mole fraction to, uh, sorry total pressure as mole fraction in the vapor phase? Well, let's start it this way. Uh, we know that the pressure of component one above the solution is the mole fraction in the solution times the vapor pressure of pure one. This was Raoult's law. We also know that the vapor pressure of one above the solution is the mole fraction times the total vapor pressure. This is Dalton's law. Both of these quantities equal the partial pressure of component one. So we can say X1 P1 star is Y1 P total. Or in other words, the total pressure is equal to the mole fraction in the liquid phase divided by the mole fraction in the vapor phase times the vapor pressure of pure one. So if we could just figure out to express X as a function of Y, then we can replace that and then the total pressure will be a complete pressure of Y. So we're looking for an expression X equals some function of Y and plug that in here. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We know that the mole fraction in the vapor phase we just said was the vapor, the partial pressure in the vapor phase divided by the total pressure above the solution and that's equal to that over the total pressure and we have two components it's just the sum of the partial pressures again that's the total pressure being the sum of the partial pressures that's Dalton's law and that of course assumes that we have an ideal solution and the gases behave like ideal gases and so on and we know that from Raoult's law that the partial pressure pressure above the solution is just a mole fraction of the solution times the pressure of pure one divided by P1, the mole fraction in one times the pressure of pure one plus P2 is the mole fraction component two times the pressure of pure two. Raoult's law. And that's what Y1 is equal to. Well, there we go. If we rearrange this, we have an expression of X1, the mole fraction of one, as a function of Y1, which we can then put into this expression and get total pressure as a function of just the mole fraction in the vapor phase. We can get rid of the mole fraction in, the, in that phase. 
let's go ahead and do that. Actually, we know we can replace this. We can get rid of the x2 by having x1 p1 star over x1 p1 star plus 1 minus x1 p2 star. Because we have a two component system and the sum of all fractions have to equal 1. Well, let's just go ahead and multiply this thing out. And we go on to the next page. Actually, we can probably make this just uh, clean this up a little bit. So if we multiply P2, we got that, minus P2, and so on. So uh, we can re-express this. So Y1 will be equal to X1, P1 star, divided by P1 star minus P2 star X1 plus P2 star. So there we go. So we want to solve this X1 equals some function of Y1. Alright, well let's go ahead and do this. You can skip to the end if you're not interested in this derivation. P1 star minus P2 star X1 plus P2 star. Y1 multiplies all of that. And that's equal to X1 P1 star. Let's pull out the X1 and multiply by Y1. So we have X1, Y1, P1 star, minus P2 star, uh, plus Y1, P2 star, is X1, P1 star. Okay, we're getting close, so let's put that X1 over there. And that will be X1, Y1, P1 star, minus P2 star, minus X1, P1 star, Let's put that over there. We're isolating the Y1s over here. So we have Y1, P2 star with a minus sign. Don't forget the minus sign. Let's pull out the X1. So we've got X1 times this whole thing. Y1, P1 star minus P2 star. We pulled out the X1. So this is just minus P1 star. That's equal to minus Y1, P2 star and we'll put this thing in the denominator here. So we end up with x1, the mole fraction of 1, x1 is equal to y1 p2 star over, let's see, p2 star minus p1 star y1 plus p1 star. There we go. So we have x, the mole fraction in the liquid phase as a function of the mole fraction in the vapor phase. So we go back over to our equation that the total pressure was a mole fraction in the liquid divided by the mole fraction in the vapor times the partial pressure purin. Okay, we know what that is. We're going to plug that right in there. Y1 P2 star divided by P2 star minus P1 star y1 plus p1 star. That's x1. We multiply that by p1 star and then we divide by y1. The y1's cancel out. So the total pressure is that y1 canceled out so it's just p1 star p2 star divided by that y1 went away so we just have p1 star plus y1 p2 star minus P1 star. There we go. So the total pressure is a function of the pressure of the, sorry, the mole fraction in the vapor phase. And recall that uh, Root's law, the total pressure as a function of the, the total pressure is a linear function of the mole fraction in the liquid phase. This is P1 star minus P2 star X1 plus P2 star. Now there is a total pressure versus mole fraction liquid phase. That's linear. But what's interesting is that the total pressure is not a linear function of the mole fraction in the vapor phase. So that gives rise to bubble point line, dew point line, and we'll talk about the tie line in just a second. So here's a typical plot. This is benzene toluene, which is almost an ideal mixture benzene toluene, two component system. So what we're plotting here is the total pressure above the solution as a function of the mole fraction of benzene. 
mole fraction component one. This here is Raoult's law. So this will be uh, plotted versus the mole fraction of benzene. So this now is a function of the mole fraction in the solution. Now if we take the same data and plot it as a function of mole fraction in water, uh, sorry, in the vapor phase, this is mole fraction in the vapor phase, you don't get that straight line, you get this curved line, this red line that goes up like this. So this is called the bubble point curve or bubble point line, that's what that is, and this is called the dew point line. So let's see what happens if we, let's say we're having, we're start here, right up here, and remember that we're assuming we have constant temperature. So remember for a two component system we have three degrees of freedom, we're reducing that by whole, to two degrees of freedom by holding temperature constant. So the two degrees of freedom are pressure and composition. So let's start up here at this particular pressure and at this particular composition. So this would be about half and half. So you got half benzene and half toluene. So there's a, a, new, a new symbol here that a lot of textbooks use. So Z will correspond to mole fraction, total mole fraction. Combine both the liquid and the vapor phase and get the total mole fraction. So we have like X is the mole fraction in a solution or the liquid. Y corresponds to vapor. And Z corresponds to the total mole fraction of a, of a particular component. All right, so this is benzene. We're sitting up here, it's all liquid. Now what would happen if we lower the pressure? Let me change the color again so we can see that. So what would happen if we now lower the pressure? We're lowering the pressure. We're still up here in the liquid region. So this is corresponds to at a particular composition and high enough pressure, we're in the liquid region. If you now start lowering the pressure above the liquid, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna enter this region here. This region here is a two phase region so here you have liquid plus vapor where you're in this particular range of composition and pressure. Now as you go further on down in pressure you have in this region where you're in total vapor so there's no liquid present. Here you have one phase only present. Up here in this region you have one phase only present and within the, the bubble point and dew point lines, that area, you have two phases present, liquid plus vapor. Now the reason why this is called a bubble point line, a dew point line, think about this. So here you have all vapor. When you just hit this line, some of the vapor starts to condense. Just like in an early morning, if you have a very humid air, and the, the night air cools it down, when you wake up in the morning, uh, there's dew on the ground. So this represents that transition from just all vapor to actually some sort of condensation. And then as you go here, you have liquid plus vapor. When you go further up, what's happening is you're starting to go from all liquid to vapor. You get bubbles. Uh, maybe you think of this like as uh, boiling. Okay, so that's what the bubble point line is, what the dew point line is, and the, the different phases. You can also say start at this particular point in the phase diagram where you have say no benzene, all toluene, it has that vapor pressure. If you go across this way, when you cross the bubble point line, you go from an all liquid to a liquid plus vapor. And now you go from liquid plus vapor to all vapor as you increase the composition, uh, com percent of the mole fraction of benzene. We know a little bit about uh, bubble point lines and we know about dew point lines, that and that.